Welcome, everyone. I am Anthony Blackwell. I am here with my colleague, Maria. And if the first thing you thought of was Tony and Maria from West Side Story, when we do the exercises, <laughs> please give yourself a extra point. All right. So here we are, Tony and Maria. We're talking ISO 45001, the occupational health and sa safety. All By right. the way, Tony, uh, Tony Saria from Act Two of White Side Story is one of my favorite areas, opera areas. There you go. There you go. All right. So uh, we're going to get to the next slide. You might have a couple of seconds uh, okay, delay, okay, by okay. the way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So there's a couple of seconds delay. And here we are. Here are the rules for today. Today's rules. Mics are muted. Cameras are disabled. Chat is open for questions and comments. We'll approach ISO 45001 as a strategic decision. There will be three exercises to be uh, to be solved. There will be a Q&A session and free consultancy session offered to attendees. So if you, I would take advantage of that if I were you. All right. Just right, to so say that uh, when we uh, solve the exercises, all three of them will give the correct answers and the explanations why those are considered to be correct at the end before the Q&A session. Okay. Uh, ISO 45001 is the new standard on uh, occupational health and safety. Uh, it provides an international framework to enhance employee safety, reduce occupational risk, and create a better and safer working conditions. And the great part about this is that, as it says, it's an international framework to, uh, to do these things. And this is an international standard, ISO, international standards. So when you have an international standard, everyone knows how you do your business. They say, you say, oh, I'm ISO 45001, and you can be living in China, or you can be living in Paris, or you can be living in Tokyo or wherever. They will know how you do your business, and that will just like uh, uh, give them a greater opportunity to choose you to work with. They'll be like, yes, this person is, uh, knows what they're doing. Okay. And the next slide is. I saw facts. All right, so these are the, some facts, ISO 45001 uh, facts. It's the world's first international standard addressing occupational safety and, and health. And that's what I was saying before. It's like international, like there's nowhere in the world that you can go and that this won't make your company better. Uh, it was developed with input of experts from more than 70 countries. And that's more than 70 countries, but that's thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people that had some input in it. But it's like all these different countries had some say so in like how this works so that it could be an international standard. It provides a clear and unique framework and sets the minimum standard of practice to protect employees worldwide. And it's aimed at top management. When the top management buy into this, everybody will benefit. So there you have it. And it is based on the uh, 18,001, the occupational health and safety from 18,001. And if you have the 18,001 and you're transitioning to the 45,001, the transition period ends in May 2021. Indeed, Anthony, it, uh, it ends in May, although we had, we didn't put it in here intentionally. We have half a, half a year because of COVID, but officially uh, it was uh, set up to end in May this year. So, sorry, I've changed the slide now. Okay. okay. All right, uh, the yeah. dimming cycle. Plan, do, check, act. And I think that everyone's familiar with this. This is a continuum. It's, uh, we have to make a plan, uh, policies, procedures, implement the plan, do. We want to check and see how the plan is working. Is this working? Act. And so act is always like we're doing an analysis to see we're keeping up to date on, uh, we want to standardize this and we want to continue to improve it. And then we go back to plan. So it's a continuous cycle and it just goes and we always want to be, a, be on top of this and seeing exactly what's happening, how it's happening and being able to correct it. 
We need to have not uh, just the people at the top, but everybody that's a part of the system um, can be able to influence how the system's going. And we can see like anywhere in the cycle from concept to customer to anything in, in, in between the, uh, the cycle. And we wanna keep that cycle going and we wanna make sure that it stays up to date. Next slide is an exercise uh, that uh, Tony and I have prepared for you guys. Uh, before I, I change the slide, here we go. Uh, it is meant to test us how much we know about occupational health and safety in general, even if it is OSHA. So imagine that uh, we work for a company uh, that has moved, has transitioned in the OSA system into uh, ISO 45001. And now this is our first internal audit. So we work in a different department and we'll be auditing the department uh, in front of us. So uh, we'll allow you a couple of minutes to read the audit scenario and then I'll bring up for you a question with several possible answers and i'd like you guys to uh, pick up the one you think is gonna be the correct one okay couple of minutes just all right i guess while they're doing that we need the uh, jeopardy music <laughs> tango maybe <laughs> tangles well we can have some tango music i was, I was thinking of that doo, 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 doo. oh yeah indeed i was thinking about your tango skills by the way guys he he tangos i do i do and i've had a chance to do it everywhere in the world i've been so fortunate that uh over the years uh, i have spent about three months a year out of the country a month in South America, a month in Europe, and a month in Asia. Okay, please pick up uh, the answer that you can see there might be the correct one. So we have five options in here. Tony, please pick your pick your answer as well. Uh, what do you think we should do in our role as internal auditors? Uh, investigate further, register a nonconformity call attention to the person in charge, report immediately to management, or organize a training course. Okay. Let me just write down the results, uh, uh, results, report to management, and organize a training course. Um, Brilliant. I'm not revealing the right answer. Only that 42% of you guys have managed to guess correctly. And there is an additional 40% of you, group of 40% of you, that may be also kind of right at some point. We'll discuss the results at the end. Shall we? Continue, Tony? Yes, yes, let's continue. There we go. Okay, all right. The, <clears throat> the new and the ISO 45001. The ISO 45001 concentrates on the interaction between an organization and its business environment, while the 18,000 was focused on managing uh, hazards and other internal issues. So the 45,000 is, uh, uh, is, is better because it does so many better things. Here we are. The main difference is between 18,000 and 45,001. 45,000 is process-based. 18,001 is procedure-based. 45,001 is dynamic in all clauses and the 18,000 is not. So the 45,001 considers both risk and opportunities and the 18,001 deals exclusively with risk. And what this actually stands, <clears throat> what this actually does is when you think of plan, do, check, act, 
the standard increases and improves because people are continuing to look at how things work. And when they have an opportunity to see, let's see if we can't make this better, or let's see what's working and what's not working. If we are certified to 18,001, how do we begin the migration? Uh, we perform the analysis of interested parties, establish the scope of the system, use this information to design processes, risk assessment, and evaluation, and of course, the key, uh, the key indicators. And that would be the beginning of our migration is when we look at these steps. Just change your slide. Okay. And if you're new to 45,001 and you're wondering, how do I get started? The first step is always to perform an analysis of your organization's context. Establish the scope of the system. So uh, first you're gonna perform that analysis. And when you establish the scope of the system, you're just looking to see what does this encompass? Uh, uh, what areas? Uh, next, set your occupational health and safety policies and objectives. And then we're gonna define the time frame. Uh, some things we can do quicker than others, but there's like, if we set out like uh, how we're gonna do this and we can uh, uh, have a goal and we can reach it and we can see uh, that we have a process going. And next we're determined any competence and or resource gap. So if there's any uh, resource gap or any competence we can uh, look at that and see how we can uh, work there. Because uh, ISO 45001 is an ISO management system, standard for an ISO management system, sorry, uh, it is so close to the rest of the management systems that we, we should be uh, quite comfortable implementing it. Uh, to illustrate it, here we have another exercise for you guys. Uh, just to say, if we could guess correctly what we should do as uh, internal auditors again, if we meet um, the circumstances in the following audit scenario. Couple of minutes for you to read it, and again, I'll bring up some the question and some potential answers for you. Playing music again, maybe. Definitely, yeah, playing music again. Exactly. That's what I, that's exactly what I should be doing is playing music again, putting a little bit of a Argentine tango or something on there, uh, and having something uh, happy. Absolutely, yeah. relaxing so, so and joyful. Next, exactly. So we'll have that for our, our, our next session. We'll be like all set up, and they'll be like, "Oh, okay, everybody's working on that." So we will know exactly. Uh, you know, we'll be um, kind of uh, webinar stars if we do that. Everyone's going to want to be with us. Exactly. Exactly. Because that's it. It's like you get some information and um, get some good information. You have some joy. You have a little bit of fun. And uh, in this world today, um, we need a little bit of fun and you need to find your joy where you can. Shall I bring up the question? Bring up the question. <clears throat> okay, here it goes. In our roles, uh, role as internal auditors, what action do you think we should take? Interview other members of management, investigate more in, in general, document the non-conformity, oh, in Spanish again, that's recommend an improvement action and document conformity. Sorry for the Spanish bit of the, of the questions. <laughs> It's a trick question. <laughs> Interview. Investigate. Document nonconformity. I understand that there are no answers for the fourth one because it's in Spanish. My, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Okay, not revealing the correct answer, just letting you know that 28% of you have been quite lucky to guess probably, oh, 25. 
only the right one. Thank you for this. However, there is there are sixty two percent people who may have just suggested a potential correct answer. Okay. Okay. That's very good. We we scoring pretty well. Success factors, yeah. Anthony. <laughs> That's that's pretty good. That's definitely uh, definitely good that people uh, can see uh, know what's know what's going on. We're moving in the right direction. Absolutely, and uh, uh, ISO standards are excellent tools because they basically allows allow you uh, to see what what's going on from different perspectives, and then uh, you may uh, you may like to make a decision based only on evidence, but even if you go. Mm, with kind of caution inside of a firm decision you have the right tools to finally arrive to the correct answer sorry about that <laughs> your turn oh no that's excellent that's uh the, the exactly what we uh need and exactly what we needed to hear uh so we have uh the success factors and the sex success factors or what do we need in this situation to be successful? Uh, management, leadership, commitment, and responsibilities. When we say management, leadership, commitment, and responsibilities, uh, I find that I've never heard of anyone implementing or doing something with ISOs, and when the management buys in, it works. That's it. That's it. When the management buys in, it works because we want to get everybody involved and we want everybody doing this and a lot of times it's not so much uh uh the effort it's uh simple it's just like you know because it becomes like a habit but we're always like a uh, plan do check and act and like uh improving the system but so we have like the uh, uh culture that supports the expected results of the system uh, uh with communication communication is always important uh, uh and then uh consultation and participation of workers and that's what i said everybody needs to be involved that they exist their representatives uh, <clears throat> resources to maintain the system so we want to make sure that if we have a system that we're able to maintain it and usually maintaining the system is just you know it, it is uh, uh really identifying like the issues and what's going on with the system and how well it's working uh the policies are compatible with the strategic objectives and direction. So you know that the field that you're working in, do you have an uh, uh, outline the uh, policies to um, with the strategic objectives and direction? And processes to identify, evaluate controls and risks. Okay, uh, the continuous evaluation and monitoring of the system performance that's a biggie because it's and it's it's a biggie but it's also a natural thing because every day you come to work and when you go to work and you're seeing how is your system working and when people up uh, are there when it said like everyone's involved everyone's involved uh so uh you have the continuous evaluation the integration into the business process. So this is just a natural flow that we want this to be a part of our everyday system. This is a part of the business. This is how we do our business. And this is why people trust us because we are ISO 45001 certified. Uh, our objectives align with the policies to identify risk and opportunities. So yes, we wanna always be able to uh, identify like where are there opportunities if there are areas of opportunity and what are the risks that are about, uh, uh, that can come up and compliance with legal and regulatory and contractual requirements so if we get like different contracts a lot of times one of the biggies people come to us all the time and they're like hey i'm getting this contract and when i get this contract they said i have to be like iso 45001 um, um, certified and we come out and we do our thing but this is a lot of times where it comes in. It's like the legal, the regulatory, and the contractual requirements. Because, and that just goes a lot of times, like uh, being here in New York and I guess anywhere in the world, when you're working with people from around the world, they want to know that you are doing what they consider to be uh, best practices. So, the benefits of ISO 45001. 
all right, the systematic approach, a creation of health and safety culture, a reduction of workplace incidents, reduce absenteeism and staff turnover leading to increased product productivity, reduce cost of insurance premiums, reinforce leadership commitment to proactively improve performance, ability to meet legal and regulatory requirements, enhance reputation, and improve staff morale. Uh, <clears throat> and the ISO certification, uh, international recognition, stakeholder trust, regular check, and continual improvement. And the big thing that we have here is a lot of times, uh, it's one of those things that um, uh, when you're watching like any type of sports uh, event, uh, and if you're watching the sport event and you have referees, when you don't know who the referees are and there aren't a whole lot of penalties and the game is just moving, that's how things work. That's how things flow. Your team's doing a well, good job. They're not getting penalized. Everything is flowing. You know, it's just like, yep, there they go. We put them out there. There's no flags. You don't even notice the referees. You went home. The game was played. It was a good game. It was a close game. And uh, that's how it works. That's a big indeed. Uh, we regard uh, the ISO certification as a benefit from the standard because it's a certifiable standard. As Anthony says, it's a completely different thing if there is a body, third party body, coming to see what you do and saying, oh, those guys are doing just brilliant. Because, however, when people hear mm, certifications and audits, uh, they get really, really scary off. Uh, we have prepared an exercise for you guys to see if you're going to guess correctly what an external auditor will do if presented with the following circumstances. So, a couple of minutes again, now we are accompanying a third party auditor. Uh, let's read the auditing scenario and see if we can guess correctly what the auditor is going to do. Okay. That's an interesting exercise, isn't it? It is a very interesting exercise. Here we go. Yeah. Shall I bring up the question? Uh, bring up the question. Okay, here we go. So, what action do you think the external auditor will take? Answer one, none. They will be satisfied with the finding, findings. Mm -hmm. Or none, because the observation has occurred on their break. Maybe they will investigate further. They may recommend, according to the answers proposed, an action or document a non-conformity. Come on, guys. Okay. <laughs> Anthony, which one did you go with? I went with the, um, now I have to think what the answers were because I already did it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I went with the, uh, I went with the third one. What was the third one? The third one is investigate further. Yes, I'd like to investigate yeah. further and see, we'll see what's, what's going on there. Uh, yeah, because I'm wondering. Uh, uh, I'm going also, to reveal. <laughs> I'm going to reveal. Also, I, I, you think about the nonconformity. It's like that. This uh, we need to balance that out. But we are yeah. going to find out. Uh, you're right, Anthony. And uh, forty-five percent of the audience uh, have got it right. Why uh, this is the right uh, answer? The correct answer. I will reveal further on. But at the moment, yes, indeed. Uh, 
we have enough evidence only to investigate further. Why? I will explain later on. Let's finish the, the expose the first. Thank you, guys. Okay. Slides up, Anthony. Any, any second now? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, the Q and A is uh, I'll answer to the questions at the end. Okay. okay. All right. So the third party audit, uh, audit ISO forty five thousand and one. Uh, the reason to audit to de determine conformance to requirements, determine the effectiveness of the system, improve the system, meet regulatory requirements, meet con contractual requirements for marketing and reputational purposes. Okay, uh, so those are like all good reasons to do the audit. And the best reason to do the audit is just you want to stay on top of it. You want to uh, definitely, I would go with improve the system, constantly improving the system. And there, that seems to be like a, a really big thing. You want to make sure that people are aware. And some audit principles, integrity, uh, fair presentation, uh, due professional care, confidentiality, independence, evidence-based approach and risk-based approach. So definitely when we're doing the audit, it's a big thing and big, uh, and it's good because you want to know where you stand. And so when you do like an internal audit and an external audit, you're always on top of like the system to make sure that the system is working. By the way, this is also the explanation why uh, finally uh, we'll be going with further investigation uh, during the uh, previous exercise. Just a second. Yes, I finally switched slides for you, Anthony. Sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. So here we have uh, <clears throat> um, uh, actions to address risk and opportunities. Uh, I mean, step one is hazard identification. Step two, identifying who may be harmed and how. Step three, risk assessment to determine whether existing measures are appropriate or whether more needs to be done. Step four, documenting findings. And step five, assessment review and new actions planning if necessary. So, uh, what we're saying here is um, the actions to address risk and opportunity, a risk assessment, a risk assessment, routine and non-routine activities and situations, human factors, new or changed hazards, possible emergency situations, staff and stakeholders, change in knowledge and information about hazards. So yes, those are uh, uh, some key points right there about yeah. addressing risk and opportunities. A big in 45001, as any other ISO management system standard. Exactly. Okay. And we have the next slide. Yeah, it's and already on. <laughs> concluding. The transition period to migrate the system in conformity with ISO 45001 ends in May. Employees, managers, and business owners aim at a common goal, occupational safety and health. Your partners and other stakeholders have their expectations set on you as you have yours set on them. So that you are reliable, ask them to do the same. ISO 45001 is considered a revolutionary standard by occupational health and safety professionals. Accepting good adopting good practices is becoming crucial to reputation. And it is. It's one of those kind of things that when you go at a lot of places and when you talk to people and you want to uh, do business with them, you want to know how they do business. And when you want to know how they do business and they have like the uh, uh, occupational safety and uh, health and safety. You know, some of the places where you go and uh, you go and they have like those blackboards uh, where it has like, or where you walk in, how many days since the last incident or something like that. I worked in a, a auto factory in Germany. Uh, we made tractor trailer parts. 
And uh, that was like a, an interesting gig. And there really weren't uh, a lot of uh, accidents or incidents there at, at that factory where I worked at in Germany. I was there for a couple of years. Uh, the only time they ever had an issue was uh, one time they were saying that there would no longer be beer at, at the factory during work hours. Everyone walked. Uh, that was it. But otherwise, they were like, uh, yeah, everyone was safe and, and, and that. But one day they said, hey, there won't be any more beer because, you know, a guy comes around pushing beer and lunch cart, you know, at 10 o'clock he would come and then at noon and then at two. Uh, and they would come around pushing carts and that. They would go around pushing the cart and that. That was a thousand years ago. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> So thank you, Anthony, for the webinar. Now we are entering the Q&A session. Shall we start with revealing the correct answers and most importantly, why those answers are considered to be correct? OK, first exercise, we had to uh, audit a system migrated from OSAS 18,001 uh, to ISO 45001. And actually, we said that, um, you guys said, uh, that um, it should be, most of you went with non-conformancy, which is fantastic, brilliant. 14% uh, decided uh, to go with further investigation. If you did so, you're right. Going with a further investigation is not, uh, definitely not a bad decision if you're not uh, sure about the outcome. Uh, in this particular case, however, there are enough evidence for an auditor to see non-conformancy. You would be right with uh, further investigation only if afterwards you actually decide to go with a non-conformancy. Uh, why we have a non-conformancy here? Well, basically because uh, there hasn't been uh, a risk, risk assessment uh, conducted. We can, uh, as uh, auditors, we can claim, for instance, lack of training or other possible issues. Most auditors, though, would raise an unconfirmancy directly because there hasn't been a risk assessment carried out. Risk assessment is fundamental, it is essential to every single ISO management system standard. Okay? Uh, Next scenario, how familiar are we with ISO management system? Um, turns out that we're pretty familiar, basically because we had the 62% of you saying further investigation. Again, it's a very good answer if you're not quite, uh, quite sure. Uh, so you would be right if, if you further on, onto the investigation, discover a non-conformancy, basically because there enough um, evidence uh, to document it. And I'm inviting you to place a bet on what I'm going to say next. Why do we have a non-conformancy? Basically because there is no risk assessment carried out. Despite the engineers being fully qualified despite the impeccable uh, logbook on the generator, we need to carry out risk assessment. How about if it is bring your kids to work day? Or we have people visiting or whatever. So this is the reason an audit is gonna uh, is gonna file immediately a non-conformancy. Risk assessment is essential. Regarding the third scenario, uh, please don't be afraid of third-party auditors. Basically because uh, Anthony went through the seven auditing principles. Lead auditors, as myself, are sworn to behave in a very nice way, applying those seven uh, principles. We need to make only evidence-based decisions. We need to assess how your organization complies with the standard. We don't take anyone's word for sure. 
without just checking, double checking, triple checking, checking cats. And in this case, we don't have enough evidence to file a non conformity Okay? Because we are basing, basing at the moment our judgment on only a few uh, complaints filed. The sample is very, very tiny. What I would do in this in this circumstance, the circumstances, well, I would like to, to see uh, records for the previous periods going one year, two years, three years, if possible, uh, back and seeing how it used to work. Uh, I would talk to other people and checking out how many people actually go to the canteen, how many used to go, how many go now. And then I'll base my decision on my new findings. Okay. Anthony, do you have any anything else to add before I... I I do not have anything else to add at this time, no. Okay. I think you pretty much covered everything really well. Thank you. So let's uh, let's talk about um, our questions. We have a question. Hi, uh, Vladimir is asking, could you tell more about consultation and participation of workers, please? Okay, and there is a similar, pretty much similar question. Uh, thank you, Paul, for your question. How does employee well-being fit into uh, this standard, if at all? Okay, uh, this is a very interesting uh, question, the second one, and the first one as well. Uh, it fits, uh, basically, the, the workers' well-being fits within the consultation and participation in workers and their rep representatives, if any, which is part of um, clause five leadership in the standard. So, the standards ask organize, asks organizations to consider what workers think and their representatives think about the processes. Uh, if we know something about the ISOs, we know as well that um, all ISO standards, all ISO management system standards, um, require for measures to be taken based on feedback to improve our processes. So, ISO 45001 introduces the workers and representatives consultation to provide feedback on the processes. So this is how the, st the standard helps out organizations identify what else is needed to be done. For instance, um, you have new executives taking uh, their, uh, their places in the companies and they decide to make changes. Who are the first people uh, realizing how good neutral or bad those changes may be while well, employees and workers obviously in order to improve our system we need to talk to them and we need to guarantee that their heard and their opinions are taken into account uh, i hope i have answered the question uh, if you guys uh, let me know if uh, I have answered your questions or you need any further explanations, uh, I'd be grateful. Okay, question. I'm thinking about mental health and stress issues, not just physical health and participation. Does this make sense? Yes, indeed, Paul, exactly. This is within the standard. So, uh, consultations are not strictly limited to physical damages, injuries, etc. Uh, they are they consider all issues. For instance, let me give you some figures from ISO. Uh, it is considered the International Organization of Labor uh, considers that there are 2.78 dead deaths per year due to uh, work-related uh, accidents and nearly 400 million um, non-fatal 
uh, injuries, including health and mental issues, uh, mental health issues, sorry. So the ISO considers that 99% of all those accidents, illnesses and diseases can be prevented. And actually the 45,001 aims at offering a comprehensive set of good practices to allow companies to achieve the target. Uh, yes, Paul, uh, indeed. I hope that I've answered the mental health question as well. It is within the standard indeed. Consultations, again, are not limited to purely physical protection. Any other questions? Anthony, any, anything you might like to add? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, certainly I, I, the only thing I would say is that uh, above all is like the uh, psychological aspects of like uh, uh, doing things in there that that has to be like one of the key components because it's something that you can't see and, uh, and you just get like an idea. You want people to be comfortable and to be uh, where they work at and uh, be able to trust in the place that they work that everything will be OK uh, with their occupational health and safety so thank you anthony i'm just allowing for a second jim to say hi oh jim please uh, will you unmute yourself well hello there hi jim do you have anything to add to, to the webinar on your side uh, just the uh, emphasis on management buy-in is the most to me the most important thing that once management buys in that the culture can change to a, a safer uh, uh, culture within the company. Absolutely, that's close the five in all ISO management system standards, uh, highlighting, highlighting the role of management. And as everyone could see, we actually represent the Deming cycle with leadership in the middle of the cycle. It used to be represented only with the PDCA actions, but recently we started to highlight uh, the role of senior management, as you say, if they buy it, it's, uh, it's already done. And uh, further on, uh, we'll be talking about other relevant standards shortly, maybe in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, namely information security and uh, business continuity. So if you follow MSM on social uh, media, you'll get uh, the alerts. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Anthony, for your help. Oh, question. Uh, in the UK, we spent seven billion on absence and two billion presente uh, absenteeism. Presenteeism. Oh, sorry, I can't see it very well. Yeah. Uh, oh, tw 26 billion on presenteeism, lost productivity, etc. This is focusing on attention, on mental well being for our teams as these distractions are potentially leading to physical accidents. Indeed, Paul, that's correct. This is why uh, most professionals consider uh, ISO 45001 to be a revolutionary standard because it aims at reducing not only costs, but also improving substantially people's lives and the community's well-being as well, because communities are affected when people are affected. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, once hey, again. Thank you. Hope I see you soon. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, thanks, Maria. Bye.